excited to introduce this guest today, David Mall. I think I pronounced that right. And he's joining us from Illinois. So first and foremost, David actually joined farm prep training in the thick of harvest. He joined um, him and his wife and son and daughter-in-law. Am I correct in saying yes. that? All joined us in September. So right in the middle of harvest, chaos, a lot happening. Not only did they crush one-on-one -on -one coaching, they went into a legacy and he's been with us ever since. So I'm really excited to introduce you guys to David Mall today. So David, I would love for you to just introduce yourself, give us a little bit background about who you are and what you do, and then we'll go from there. Yep. Yeah, I'm David Mall, a uh, grain farmer here in East Central Illinois, we have a little, by the little town of Rankin. Uh, been my fourth generation farmer, I guess you and been this will be my 35th crop to plant as a farmer. Started my senior year of high school. Been married to my wife Vicky for like, oh, <laughs> 10 years of late, 1995, August of 95. I remember the day of the year is rough for me to remember sometimes. Uh, <laughs> that or stage fright got me there. I'm not sure which. But, so yeah, and we have five children. Uh, Austin, he's the oldest. Married to Allie, they they went through the coaching with us at the same time. Austin's 27. Mason is 25. He's engaged to Lindsay. They have a September wedding this fall. And Weston's 21. Uh, and then we have two little tag along girls. They are 10 and 7. So we have a busy house. So there's a lot going on. And started, yeah, I didn't even tell my wife that I had signed up for the applic applied to farm fit training, the interview back in, the interview was probably in August. We, I'd been watching on social media. I'd seen Tracy's videos and, you, and your videos, Amanda, and just the different things on social media. I'm like, that's interesting. And a couple of years ago, I tried a program pre-COVID and uh, lost weight. But as soon as you, it involved their food and stuff, and it, it wasn't sustainable. And uh, so when the opportunity oh, applications opened, I was like, I'm going to try this. It's it's what I want to do. It's to the point where I wanted to do something about my health before some doctor was shoving it down my throat, you know, whether it was high blood pressure or cholesterol or something that was, I wanted it to be on my terms, I guess was kind of the, I wanted my health journey to be on my terms instead of some doctor or some health professional saying it's this or that, you know, and it's, it's, it's been a journey and it's not always just, how do you say it? It's, it's work, but yet, if you think about it, like, you know, you, you get down with your workout and you go put away a, a 30 pound dumbbell. And of course, the end of your workout, you're a little exhausted, but you put that away and you're like, well, that was a little bit of effort, but I was carrying that around extra every day, not knowing it. So that, that, that makes you feel good right there that uh, an accomplishment that not only do your clothes fit better, but that you're hauling less around. And you and Vicky crushed it. First and foremost, you guys are freaking phenomenal clients and we appreciate you and everybody is a phenomenal client first and foremost i don't want to downplay anybody else but i love the fact that you guys came in and you were super open-minded and you trusted us and that's the biggest thing with a health a fitness journey is sometimes when we start something it's like oh is this going to be another program where i'm going to it's not going to be sustainable or is it going to be another program where I'm going to fall right back into my old habits? And so we really educate the science and why behind everything you're doing. I would love to hear your feedback. You mentioned that you did a program pre COVID and I actually didn't know that, but I would love to hear your feedback. Like what really stuck out joining the tribe, you know, joining one-on-one -on -one coaching and now, you know, going into legacy that was different from anything you've ever done before. Like, what was that one nugget you would like to share with everybody where it's like, you know what, this is sustainable. Like, this is the right place and the right program for yeah. me to be in. The, simplic the simplicity of it was probably one of the big things uh, that made this felt like it fit and worked. And uh, in the past, it was it was only a, the program I tried was, it was only nutrition only. And that, we'll just leave it at that. It was, it made you lose weight fast, but it didn't do anything else for you, which um, the farm fit program was combining some fitness or an exercise with the nutrition and it's more of a system. It's not like you're trying to work with a silver bullet because th there is no silver bullet in this world, <laughs> uh, or at least not that I've found. And uh, so 
Yeah, what you put in is what you get out. Yeah. And we're very transparent about that. Like, if you're going to go in to this, especially with us, I mean, we really educate that why and science behind everything we do. But the thing is, you're tackling a big beast and we don't try to swallow all of it at once. I always think of that elephant analogy where it's like, you know, you can't eat a whole elephant in one day. You got to take yeah. bits and bits of price of that. Sure pieces of that. And that's what really we do is we really tackle, Hey, let's educate you on how to feel your body correctly so that you can function at your ultimate best, you know, and that's different for every single person in which you saw going into the program because you did it with your wife, you know, you you and Vicky didn't have the same macronutrients, but it was able where she could cook one meal and it worked for all of you. And that was really cool in that aspect too, is where you guys got to see that, you know, sometimes we have couple or individuals join the program without their spouse and they start to learn how to feel their body and understand the science and why behind that. And I love taking on couples. That's one of the things I never thought or (laughs) expected opening the doors of front fit training is taking on couples, but with couples, it's really cool to show like, Hey, you can cook one meal and it's going to work for Vicky. It's going to work for you. And you guys um, are eating one meal where the whole family is eating the same thing. It's not like something like what you did before where it's like, hey, it's a nutrition program and you eat exactly what they tell you. Like, Mm -hmm. what's that going to teach you? You know what I mean? It's not going to set you up for long term. And I guess the other question I would love for you to dive in is I know you came in at the thick of harvest, you <laughs> it right in the middle, you and Austin, you know, and it's the same thing with your spouses, you know, you guys all joined us right in the thick of harvest. Can you give us a little information about like how, like joining the program and, and jumping in right in the middle of the most yeah. busy season? Cause you know, like our ultimate goal as farmers, cause I mean, I'm married to a fifth generation farmer. Yeah is like harvest time is busy. Like you're focused on getting that crop out of the field as fast as possible, you know, before winter comes. You're not only dealing with the added stress of getting the crop out, weather throws in there. Next thing you know, like breakdowns happen. And so that stress is just super intensified during that time and season. Can you kind of explain like a little bit, give us a little bit information, like how you were able to combat that using farm fit training and yeah. still being able to dive in and get stuff done. I mean, I remember pod calls where you were in the tractor, <laughs> like, <laughs> and, kid, and and Vicky was in her kitchen. <laughs> yeah. so, so like you guys made it work in the yeah, most really was- hectic season. Like, yeah. let's hear a little bit more about that. Yeah. And, you know, thinking back, if I was to do it again, I would say, let's do it the same way. Oh, we had probably, I think I started was August 8th or not August 8th, September 8th, uh, whatever it was, whatever that Sunday was. We had about a week or two to get our feet on the ground and kind of get a feel for it. And then, yeah, the wheels came off the bus and it was busy. But uh, being that busy, uh, you just got up and got your workout done in the morning and you didn't really have time to think about it the rest of the day. It was just almost mechanical. We had our... Uh, I remember Tracy in one of her replies on the one-on-one coaching was her in her little notes that she replied to me was tell me you're busy without telling me you're busy. And yeah, I think I had had a shake for breakfast and a beef stick and another shake and a uh, first form bar. <laughs> and that was, yeah. So, but it was, and then some vegetables with me and stuff, but yeah, it was very mechanical there, but yeah, it's, and this is, I'm thinking ahead to planning. Planning is ready to start here probably within the next week or two and harvest you come in, you got a few extra minutes in the morning because of the dew, but planning it's, it, that's going to be, a, a, that's going to be a fun one to manage, but I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge. We'll see how it goes, but yeah. And just thinking back, we started the second phase, the advanced phase of one-on-one coaching whilst harvest was still on. And that involved the first week, there was a couple runs in there and the one run we cut beans till one o'clock and came in and farm with the three boys and myself and they're pretty adamant that we grease the combine before we go home which is fine because you might as well go dirty and then home go home and take a shower well i had a run that was that i had not checked off that night and uh, tracy commented that was a good time and i says yeah that run was between that that run was in the way of my bedtime <laughs> going to getting into my bed so it was like a personal best on the run time so yeah uh, it was six or seven minutes whatever it was but it was I had a lot of motivation that night to get it done and get in my bed. So yeah, that was kind of a fun nugget, but yeah. 
but the habit was there. So that's yeah. the cool part. Like there's a lot to celebrate in just that. Like you already established a habit and you committed to yourself. And I think that's the biggest thing with fitness journeys. Sometimes we don't realize how much it impacts our mental health as we're going through it. Like we dive in and yeah, we're learning about exercise. We're learning about nutrition and how to feel our body, but that mental health component, a lot of people and a lot of coaches out there nowadays don't tap into that. And we really tap into that with you guys. We tap into habit training. We tap into following through for yourself and committing full force. And you really took that to heart. And, you know, and that's a really cool aspect is where clients like you and Vicky, when you guys join us, like it becomes super fun because you guys really truly see that potential here, not just in the program, but in yourselves, you know, and, and with training and that longevity. And just like you said earlier, you know, you didn't want a doctor to tell you like, Hey, it's time to start working out or, Hey, we might have to put you on some blood pressure medicine. <laughs> You're like, Nope, I'm going to take control of this now and, and follow through for myself and continue it. So you know, like alongside of that, like that habit was established. And I think you're going to crush planting season. I'm really excited. <laughs> you're going to be like one of those clients yeah. that are in the master group chat, lighting everybody up being like, I got this done. <laughs> like, where are you guys at? So, I mean, I, I'm not worried about that yeah. at all. Like, I mean, I know Jamie's been checking in with you in platinum and she's been keeping you holding you accountable, but you're going to be yeah. absolutely fantastic. And I guess the last question I have you, and I always like to highlight this one is how has farm fit training affected your day to day on the farm and not just like day to day on the farm, but how has it also affected your family? Just thinking about that a little bit. I mean, it's, it does make just being a little more fit and your, the shape your body's in. It's a little easier to do things or a lot easier to do things. I mean, I remember it was probably a year ago, a little over a year ago in the fall, climbed the bent, grain bin. We was fixing a spot or something up there. And one of the boys says, what's the matter? I said, I'm getting old. I was panting like a dog. But uh, earlier this week, I had to climb a bend. I wasn't as tall. But yeah, I went up and down. And yeah, I, you can tell your your body's in better shape. You got better endurance and you're hauling a little less weight around. And then... Yeah, that's that this that aspect of it. And then forget what was the other part of your question? How has it affected your family? Oh, the family. You know, I think it's affected just the way we eat as a family. You know, we pay a little more attention to what we're what we're what we're putting on the table. No. The little girls were how do I say this? They were the mac and cheese kids, you know. And we still have mac and cheese at the table from time to time, but it's not near as often as it was. Uh, as an example, you know, so, and then one thing I liked, and you, you suggested it in even an early one-on-one -on -one coaching was you make a casserole, double the meat or a dish or whatever you would call it. And I'm a meat eater. So I actually, if I had my check preference, like if there was a leftover piece of steak in the fridge or a dessert, I'm probably going to take that piece of steak out. And that's, that's my nature. So I'm glad that with the macros and the way they fit into the program, anything's on the table. I mean, it's just you got to make the puzzle come together at the end of the day, or that's my goal is to make the puzzle come together at the end of the day and get get my macros in. So as far as the rest of the family, you know, we had some fitness equipment in the basement. There was a treadmill and an elliptical and some uh, some weights and stuff, and they were just sitting down there getting dirty. And uh, the girls don't come down as much very often when I'm down there, but they're pretty quick if Vicky's down there and if they're home during the day, they'll grab some little weights and swing them around. I mean, and uh, so yeah, it's. It's it's planting seeds and that uh, of what fitness can do for you. Leading the charge. If I, and that's <laughs> the cool thing about fitness journey is a lot of people don't realize it is by just working on yourself, you're actually impacting those around you without even realizing it. And, you know, kids and ch children, I mean, even older children, just by you leading by example, you're setting up that future generation and showing them, Hey, what taking care of yourself looks like, you know, when it comes to nutrition, eating habits, you know, lifting weights. Like, I mean, we, we get tons and tons of clients that post pictures of their kids lifting weights with them or <laughs> being a part of that. And it's really cool to see because they're going to grow up with that mentality and that, Hey, like I need to take care of my body because I have one body yeah. and this is it. And like, Hey, I need to, you know, watch what I'm eating, you know, make sure it's a good wholesome food, you know, make sure I'm getting enough protein, 
you know, a lot of people to under eat when they come into protein, which I, you probably have noticed. I'm sure I heard <laughs> a comment from you about protein, you know, and we always think that we're eating enough. And then when we actually track it, it's like, oh, wait, I wasn't eating enough protein or yeah. I wasn't getting enough movement. And so, you know, that's the cool thing too about what farm fit training stands for is like, yeah, we dive into those workouts, you know, and they're quick and effective. Like we're not asking you to do 45 minutes to an hour, you know, they're 15 to 25 minutes. And then nutrition, we really tackle breaking down macronutrients because first and foremost, macros, yes, you're focusing on calories, but at the end of the day, we're really honing in on that nutritional value of foods, you know, and how to really fuel our body. And then you couple that with mindset and it's just like super cool to see how it impacts families and how it impacts the future generations, especially with your farm. Like you said, you guys, have, you're going into your 35th, right? 35th yeah. farm. Yeah. I planted insane. my first crop as a senior in high school that I was, I rented a farm. Yeah. You can relate to my husband. So my husband actually, <laughs> he took over and started planting when he was 18 too. And he's been, he's 46, 47. I just dated him. He's going to hate this video. <laughs> but I, yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember if I personally planted the first crop, but I, I, you know, I was probably doing the spring tillage in my, and somebody, somebody else planted it. But yeah, it was, I was financially involved for, yeah, 30, since night, yeah, 35 years, I guess it is. But yeah. Yeah. You know, and farming is a legacy, it's a family event. Yeah. A lot of farms are generational, especially in the United States. And that's something to take great pride of because like, I mean, you grew up on the farm. My boys are growing up the farm. Your kids are growing up on the farm, you know, and it's, it's a generational legacy that we're handing down to future generations. So it's really cool to see, you know, that you've been involved for 35 years, yeah. which is super impressive. Well, outside of that, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time out of the day. I know this is lunchtime, so you're probably mm -hmm. hungry. But I really appreciate you just sharing a little nugget and letting everybody get to know you. I would love for it if you're comfortable. Uh, where can people find you, or like if somebody wants to reach out to you and ask questions about your experience with us, where can they find you on social media? Yeah, I, I, I have all the platforms on my phone. I'm kind of a, a lurker. I, I, I read social media, but I don't respond very often. But yeah, <laughs> I think, I think my Facebook is David Mall. And then I'd have to look. Instagram might be Dmall Farms, and I forget the other ones, but that's the that's probably the two I see the most. But yeah, Facebook and Instagram. There we go. I mean, I'm on all I'm on all of them except Snapchat. I got kicked off that platform. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stay off that one for now. But I would have to say my favorite is Instagram, and hands down Twitter. Twitter is very controversial though, so you got to be careful over there. Sure. <laughs> I have an account. I have never posted anything, but yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of keyboard warriors over there on Twitter. But again, <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time. And like, if you guys want to follow him, definitely check David out. Give Shoot him a message if you have questions. I mean, him and his wife, Vicky, crushed it. And also your oldest son and daughter-in-law, they all did absolutely fantastic. So we appreciate you first and foremost, trusting us with your, this aspect of your life. You know, that's something that we take great pride in being able to dive in with you guys as clients, but also to be that impact and that motivation for you guys to find that sustainable system. So I want to say thank you. And I hope you have a fantastic afternoon. Sure. Thank you.